In this video, we're going to have a look at a technique for finding the density of two liquids. That's the aim of our little exercise. And in doing this, uh, the main purpose is not so much to find the density, but to get the idea of what's involved in writing a report for an experiment. So here we have the equipment. We have, first of all, a weighing machine. Secondly, we've got a measuring cylinder, and that cylinder is a 10 milliliter cylinder. And I've got a supply here of water. So what we're going to do now is follow the method. And a, an experiment should have an aim, the list of equipment, and a method. Often enough it has a hypothesis. In this particular case uh, we're not, we don't have a hypothesis, we're just doing an investigation. It's a form of observation. So let's first of all have a look at the uh, book and how we're going to record our data. To begin with our method says using the electronic balance measure the mass of an empty cylinder So you can see there we've got a figure of 26.84 grams and that is with no liquid in the measuring cylinder. Next we'll add approximately one milliliter of water to the measuring cylinder. get an accurate measure of that volume and as you can see that's 1.2 milliliters. So we record that in the space for the volume and we record the mass 27 Point nine seven then we add another milliliter or approximately one milliliter to our volume. So we now got about 2.2 .2 millilitres and we'll record that. And record the mass. 29.05. And now we'll add another milliliter to our measuring cylinder. So now we've got a volume of 3.0, which is slightly below 3.0. And we'll record that. And we'll record the mass. A mass there of 29.82. Now we'll add one more millilitre to our or approximately one more milliliter to our volume.
Maybe it's 4.1. And now we'll record the mass. The mass we can now see is 30.91 grams. And now we'll add the last volume to our measuring cylinder. And that looks to be 5.0 millilitres. Mass, as we can see, is 31.8 2 grams. Now I'm going to get similar sort of data for another liquid, methylated spirits. First, the weight of the empty measuring cylinder. This time I'm going to add 2 millilitres. Uh, each time instead of just the one. And I'll get an accurate measure of the volume. So that's just on two. The mass there is 28.49. Now another two millilitres. Now that looks like four point two. With a mass of thirty point two five. Now adding another 2 millilitres. And that looks exactly on 6. And our mass is 31.85. And there we have a reading of 7.8 and a mass of 33.37 Volume now of just on 10 and a mass of 34.99 Now, so the next step is to complete this table down here and as it says here, the volume in millilitres as above for water so those are these values here, so we need to copy these values down into here we need now to find the mass of water that was in the cylinders at each of these stages. So we need to subtract the mass of the cylinder from each of these values here, which is, which is the mass of the cylinder plus the water. So subtracting uh, 26.84 gives us zero. Subtracting 26.84 from this value here gives us 1.13 and so on. So we need to uh, copy the values of the um, volumes of the uh, methylated spirits into this part of the table. Then we need to subtract uh, the 
mass of the empty cylinder from each one of these values. So subtracting 26.9 from 26.94 is, of course, zero. And subtracting that from these values, we get 1.55 and so on. Now we need to graph our results. First of all, we put some a scale in here. And following that, we add our label and the units. Down here, volume is the label and millilitres are the units. We need a heading or title for our graph. Then we need to mark the position of the points so that they're visible, perhaps with a clear dot or cross. If it appears that these dots are in a straight line, we should use a ruler to draw a line of best fit. Now that line of best fit in, on a spreadsheet is called a trend line. Now we can do the calculations. What we need to do as the aim of our experiment is, is to work out the density. So we need to get the mass divided by the volume, which means that we're getting the gradient of this graph. In other words, the rise over the run. And looking at the figures here, reading these figures off from the sides, what we get is 5.0 divided by 5.0 over, uh, which gives us a value of 1.0 milligrams per milliliter. And similarly, reading off those values, we get a value of uh, 0.84. Now we can write a conclusion. Now our conclusion should answer our aim, which was to find the density of these two liquids. And this is what we have found. Then we can put in the discussion. Now, often the discussion goes in before the conclusion. So here is a point which might be raised. What was difficult in uh, carrying out this experiment? Well, perhaps getting the correct volume of the fluids might have been difficult. For example, if a drop still remained attached to the side of the measuring cylinder as the fluid was added, or perhaps there was a difficulty in reading, getting an accurate measure of the liquid in the cylinder. Our recording of the data in the table, there are some things to note. First of all, we should have a heading. So here, for example, we've got this clearly indicating that it's uh, water that we're dealing with. We should have a label for the columns or the rows. So here we've got things in rows. So this is our heading the volume of water, for example, the mass of cylinder, and we have the units. So the units go in here at the heading, and we do not put the units along here in each of these cells. When it comes to drawing the graph, a couple of things we remarked on before, we need a heading, we need a label, we need the units. Um, we use appropriate scales for the X and Y axes. We use values of multiples of 1, 2, 5, 10. And we don't use multiples of 3, 6, 7 and 8, for example. Uh, labels, we've mentioned that, include the units. We mark each dot clearly. Uh, if the line of best fit is uh, going to be a straight line, then we do use a ruler. Do not draw these freehand. Um, the spread of the graph should fill the grid. In this particular case, this wasn't done terribly well. It could have been done a good deal better. Alternatively to paper, we could use a spreadsheet and we would follow the same procedures. The same rules apply. There are a couple of things that we need to look at or think about when it comes to designing experiments. One is reliability. And what this means is that the data collected during an investigation or experiment must be reliable. Another word for reliability is repeatable, which means that the same result occurs when the measurements are made again or the experiment is carried out by somebody else. 
the reliability of this investigation was in fact improved by taking more than one reading for mass and volume. We could have worked out the density simply by getting one reading, but taking a series of readings, finding those occurred on a straight line that ensured that the results were reliable. It is possible to speak of valid data and valid conclusions when it comes to experiments. The word correct could be used to describe valid data. If there are variables that are not controlled, the data is likely to be invalid. For example, if an experimenter wanted to find out the effect of heating a container of gas on the pressure of the gas, but did not keep the amount of gas in the container constant, for example, if the container leaked, then the data would be invalid. It's possible to have the data valid, but use it to come to an invalid or incorrect conclusion. For example, if we came to the conclusion as a result of this experiment or investigation, that all liquids have a density of around one gram per milliliter, that would be an invalid conclusion. We can't make that conclusion from the data that we've got. Precision is another word to understand when it comes to measurements and experiments. Precision refers to the degree of detail that we can measure it's reflected in the number of significant figures. The more significant figures, the more precise the measurement. The accuracy of a measurement is its truthfulness, how close it is to the correct value. The measurement on the electronic balance would be precise if it measured to two decimal places. However, if there happened to be a drop of water sitting on the balance that was not seen, then the measurement of the volume would not be accurate. In this investigation, the measurements of the volume to two significant figures was not really justified. So I hope this was helpful in helping you to write and understand how experimental reports are